Rub up your engines! Today, by popular demand, I'm going to talk about the six worst SUVs out there. Now, yes, SUVs are becoming more and more popular. People buy many more SUVs than cars. Look at Ford. They're giving up with their cars except for the Mustang and only selling SUVs and trucks. But being popular, the price of SUVs has gone sky high. So you don't want to spend all that money and get a pile of junk. So today I'm going to talk about six SUVs that you shouldn't walk away from. You shouldn't run away from them and never even think about buying them. Now number six on the list is the Nissan Rogue. It costumes with those. They got some mileage on them, 70, 80,000 miles. They started to fall apart. They're so bad that in October, there's a lawsuit against them for their emergency braking system. It turns out that the emergency braking system that's supposed to save you breaks itself sometimes when you're going down a highway for no reason and people can smash right into you. Just what you want to do. Own an SUV that gets you in an accident instead of avoiding it by putting on the brakes for no reason whatsoever. And overall, the vehicles are junky they lose about 60 percent of their value the first five years ownership so in this case hey nissan gave it the right name the rogue and you want to stay away from rogues whenever possible now number five on the list is the chevy equinox you don't want to buy an equinox either now chevy kind of realized they had problems in 2005 they started making the original equinox but they turned it into a crossover suv they're calling the equinox so they're still out there, and they're still falling apart. They're known for excessive oil consumption. I had a customer with one. That thing burnt a quart of oil every 500 miles. But of course, in any modern vehicle, burning oil is more than just a nuisance, because that burning oil will eventually destroy the catalytic converter and the oxygen sensors by clogging them up. And if you don't add the oil, of course, the engine blows up. It deteriorates the anti-pollution system that can cost thousands to fix down the line. All in all, not a good car. I also had customers with the transmissions went out on them, which is typical with modern GM. They don't make that good automatic transmissions anymore. That's a super expensive a fix that runs thousands and thousands of dollars. And these are on vehicles that have less than 100,000 miles. I'm not talking about something that's got three, 400,000 miles and yeah, things eventually wear out. These things wear out before their time. And just like seasons come and go, the Equinox, I'd let it go. <laughs> I wouldn't get it in the first place. <laughs> now, number four on the list is the Dodge Journey. What a surprise. Now, in 2019, they discontinued some of the Journey models and they were talking about, hey, maybe they're going to drop the Dodge Journey entirely, but they're not. A couple weeks ago, a notice that they put out talking about how great their 2020 Dodge Journey was in one of those PR brochures that they send out on the internet to try to lure people into buying them. And yeah, I'll give it to Dodge. There's a lot of room inside. They have all the creature comforts, but unfortunately, they don't hold up over time. They get pretty crappy gas mileage and their resale value is horrendous. Now they're owned by Fiat, another failing company. So now you got two failing companies merging together. What do you think they're going to do? Come up with brilliant success after decades of failures? <laughs> I mean, really, one of the reasons Fiat bought Chrysler was to have all these Chrysler dealerships where they could sell their Fiats. But now they're even talking about pulling Fiat out of the United States because their Fiat model sold so poorly in America that it doesn't make much sense to go through the trouble of trying to sell them when you're only selling a few of them and not really making any profit. And the few customers of mine that did buy Dodge Journeys, they were disappointed in the long run. They liked them when they were new, everything for the kids, and you could fit a lot of people in them. But as they aged and their transmissions wore out, or their engine started burning oil, or their electrical system started going haywire like a lot of late model Chryslers do, they said, ugh, I'm not buying another Dodge product. So take advantage of my customer's mistake and don't buy one of these Dodge Journeys. Now number three on my list of the worst six SUVs to buy, the Volkswagen Tiguan. Not a surprise either, a Volkswagen product. Now today in the United States, all Volkswagen Tiguans are powered by a four-cylinder turbocharged engine with an eight-speed automatic transmission. You realize a long time ago Volkswagen bought Audi and Porsche. They took a lot of that complex technology and put it into Volkswagens, who used to be a simple, reliable car manufacturer with the old Beetles. 
things were cheap could run forever with very little maintenance that you could easily perform yourself we can forget that with a tiguan that turbocharged direct injection engine notorious for having carbon buildup inside also had problems with the timing chains and the tensioners that they'd break when they get a little over 100,000 miles and then those are interference engines so then the valves hit the pistons and you got to put new heads on the engine it costs a fortune people junk them then if they've got any serious mileage on them and the dual clutch transmission center it's probably the worst thing that Volkswagen ever came up with I've seen those things go out and people spend five to seven thousand dollars having them replaced this high level of technology that's in the Tiguan it bites you in the rear end if you keep them for any length of time now don't be fooled by Tiguan let's say you go road test one at the dealer they are zippy fun to drive they handle quite well but they just don't hold up over time now let's say you want a zippy little SUV and you drive a thousand miles a year go ahead and buy one things generally not going to break down then thousand miles a year 30 years you put on 30,000 miles it'd probably be running perfectly fine and of course they have horrendous resale value you can get them cheap used but here we go again you don't want to use Volkswagen turbo use now number two on the list of SUVs not to buy is the BMW X series the X3 the X5 but especially the X3 over the years I've had a few customers buy BMW X series every single one of them turned into an endless money pit as they aged the level of technology in these things are insane special G sensors so they don't flip over because they're pretty high up in the air those systems break you can spend thousands of dollars fixing them their transmission systems here in the United States are all automatics are insanely complex and yes they break all the time they cost a fortune to fix often it costs more to fix the transmission than the car is worth and being modern BMWs they're plagued with oil leaks they use all this plastic crap on the engine system and on the cooling system too which have a lot of plastic stuff that ages and crack and starts to leak and man it may be cheap plastic but it isn't cheap to buy or repair when it does break now of course they're not giving these things away they're extremely expensive to begin with so unfortunately I've seen quite a few people buy them when they're five six years old think oh look at all the money I saved and yes you saved a lot of money over the original sticker price there's no arguing that if you keep one of those things for another three four years all those savings are going to go right down the toilet in repairs let's face it if you're spending 42,000 up for an SUV you expect quality and speaking of quality these X3s here in the United States they're not made in Germany they're made in the United States and South Carolina you're paying that kind of money for a German car at least myself I expect it to be made in Germany by Germans so if you value your SUV money stay away from BMW X3s now here's the moment you're waiting for the worst SUV to buy and what is it no surprise the Land Rover or to be specific the Jaguar Land Rover the company's now one company Jaguar Land Rover it used to be English but Tata the Indian company that makes those little cheap cars bought them out a while ago then they started having problems losing money so now the Chinese own half of Jaguar Land Rover so you think the quality be up make it in these new Chinese factories but no last month the Chinese were protesting at the Jaguar Land Rover factory about how poor the quality of their vehicles are rather ironic one there they were known for poor quality in England then the Indians bought them and the quality still going bad and then the Chinese own half of them and the quality still going down but strangely enough at least here in the United States they sell a lot of these Land Rovers because they're sort of the in car for the yuppie crowd they all have to have one I remember a customer of mine he was buying one for his girlfriend he had a new girlfriend he was 50 she was 20 something she just had to have a Land Rover and when I hooked up my fancy scan tool I found like 27 different things wrong with it from the giant computer scan that I had these things are not dependable hey when the Chinese are protesting in China at their headquarters in China about bad quality <laughs> that tells you something and the warning about buying a used one because it's so much cheaper to save money is doubly so warning here because as they age they fall apart faster than probably any car out there buying a used one is an endless money pit I've had customers buy them and they thought oh I only paid eight thousand dollars for this vehicle then they find out it needs four thousand here five thousand here and over the years it might need forty thousand dollars worth of work <laughs>
So if you're gonna go a roving in your SUV, just make a point of not doing it in a Land Rover. Do it in something that's built a little bit better. And yeah, everybody loves their SUVs these days, but you don't wanna get stuck with a lemon. So heed my warning and don't buy any of these six I just talked about. So if you never wanna miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.